Paranoia revisited. I see in the mirror these mornings that I'm now completely mad. Ambition, fear, and rage look back at me. I suppose that noise was only the man next door feeding his rabbit. <laughs> L'enfant prodigue. I want to see the old country before I die. Babylon to me of greasy regrets. I feel immortal Helen with a kiss. Caesar yourself, you brought her. Why don't you go back to the old country? There's only three places in that Europe I want to see, Holland, Hawaii, and the Holy Land. <laughs> Any old country. <laughs> Giant sequoias, amazing creatures. I was delighted to visit them, to watch them, languid, waving those green feather scale fronds. They aren't too far from being ferns. These giants make me laugh. They are young and fragile, upwards of 2,000 years old. I worry about them. Will they survive? Here are more of them than I had hoped, but the odds against them are huge as themselves. Night and morning, Michelangelo. Black, thick, dewy leaves inchoate and opaque. Sun crystallizes them, an apparition of green jade, varying transparency, all translucent greens. Second part. But now, after sleeping all night, part of the morning and pleasant afternoon nap, I go look at the world and it is flat. The beautiful things are beautiful. The ugly things are ugly. I have been wasting my time. <laughs> Pet shop, dead birds and live ones locked in the same cage against the window. The winter, wheelbarrow's tire is flat, muddy ground now sets a plaster mold around the folded rubber the first cold morning of the year. Crowded. 12 June, I've got three jobs, not a nickel to spend. At least I've got time to sit on my ass and complain. This paper is too narrow to contain it all. Let us, meanwhile, entertain the notion of getting bombed out of our skulls. Being away from home, there's more ganj than dollars. Why come on like a tight-ass investment banker? I can untie my bag of woe and come flapping out into the light. Gorgeous blue-green wings with purple-golden spots. One of these days, I'll learn to turn the paper 90 degrees. There'll be room enough at last to finish the line. The final wheeze. I leap up and cut a few hop twist leaps running. Lunch is all I needed, not even dope. Voices of the sacred nine chant within my ear. This dance is for Jenny Hunter. Homage to Robert Creeley. What I thought was a fly on the window was a knot on the branch outside. Near it, a real fly sat quiet in the sun. Wind rocked all the branches. The fly sat still. Uh, <clears throat> the homage to uh, Bob reminds me that I had written one for Clark last year and, and never got around to sending it to him so I can give it to him. Today, now that he's here within reach, he usually lives uh, in some location uh, known only to a few people far in the northeastern part of the United States. For Clark Coolidge, tick, notch, farandole, a Venetian lantern rhyme, perfume, wild time, gland of youth. Clara Wilkes Booth, founderess, Red Cross and Salvation Army. Clara Barton. Batten, Durstein, and Osborne, incanabula, tightrope novel, blank mind. Born clear and smooth, not a wedge in sight. Whelms, qualms, nick, scotch, sham. Um, you know, the, the funny thing is that Clark has really done the thing that Hemingway kept talking about in his, uh, 
in some of his remarks about writing about how he wanted, what he hoped to do is to get a new dimension in prose, and uh, I think that's what Clark has done. Mr. Hemingway didn't live long enough to, or didn't start early enough or something to uh, do that. What he did do, he did very well, but he didn't get to get to that place that Kenneth Rexroth used to talk about. about uh, we, a bunch of us were up talking to him one day, and Kenneth says, you know, you guys start about two jumps after the jumping out place. <laughs> it's strange. He couldn't figure out how we got to the place where we even started from, much less where we ended up. And it was very puzzling to him 20 years ago. 